back power, stay on your A's without pushing. You're just holding your A's in your hand and lifting your hands up a little bit to let the risers climb. And then we'll crank the glider. If, any, if something isn't perfect, we'll just kill the motor, turn around, and try it again. We'll just taxi. Okay, if you get everything right and we get to the point where we're full throttle and running, I want you to focus on keeping those feet down. I'll tell you, full throttle, run faster, run faster, full throttle, run faster, pressure, run faster, pressure, run faster, hold everything right there, okay? Every time I give you a command, your legs stay down and nothing changes with those landing gear, okay? All right, I want you to take a deep breath, and whenever you're ready, start coming to me with some energy from your chest. So the time is officially upon us where we finally get to go to Indianapolis, Indiana, to Midwest PBG to start our long journey of power paragliding. Now I've been waiting for this moment for several years now. I put my deposit down last year and over the last 12 months I've been saving up so I can go on this trip. And the time's come and we're about to hit the road. We're gonna finish packing up and we're gonna go lick some clouds. Let's get started. I'm not heading for the stars, driving down the boulevard tonight. Play on repeat, watching people on the street as I go by. Now my wheels in motion and my windows open. So this is it. This is my home for the next week to 10 days. Very quaint. I love hotels, man. Hotels are awesome. Uh, I don't have to pick up after myself, okay? The rent is kind of expensive, okay? I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah. <laughs> Trash on the roof. I love it. Sweet. Look at this. Got my own shower. All right, what else could you want? Oh, how about a sink? Yeah, that's all mine. And don't forget the almighty turlet. It's just too bad that these guys aren't facing the other way. I love being watched when I'm urinating. So tonight the plan is to get settled and then get in the car, go look for a grocery store so I can get some groceries for the week or at least a few days and then get some pizza because I need pizza. It's Friday night, it's pizza night. Never thought I'd take a vacation, vacation to Indiana. Usually I like to go to the beach. But it is what it is. We're making do with what we got. Originally, I was going to go to uh, Florida's. Uh, I forget what the name of it is. Aviator PPG in Florida. It's not like near the beach or anything, but still, it's Florida. But they are like booked up several years in advance. And they are like four grand. Okay. But their affiliate, their new like sister branch, is Midwest PPG here in just south of Indianapolis, Indiana. And so they do train together, the, the instructors share information, and that's how they became like sister branches. Uh, so I looked, so I called Florida's uh, PPG Center, and they said, hey, we're all booked up, but try, you know, Indiana's because you're right next to them. And I haven't, I haven't heard of them, so I was like, okay. Apparently at that time, which was about a year ago, over a year ago, they had just gotten that relationship formed, that partnership. So I called Indiana and they're like, yeah, well, when you're thinking about coming, we got availability in a couple months. I go, well, I'm looking for like a year from now. And they're like, well, awesome, that's great. And so their pricing was only uh, 2,500 at the time. And thank God I put my deposit down because since then they jacked it up to 3,500. So I saved a grand by putting in an early deposit. So it all worked out. All right, guys, that's the end of my day trip. I hit the hay, pretty tired. It's like 11.30. I have to be up at 
8.30, which isn't bad at all, actually. The first day, I don't have to be in till 10, so I'm giving myself about an hour and a half to get around, get things prepped for the big day, the big first day. I'm a little, little anxious. I mean, it's not like we're going to go straight to the air on the first day. It's going to be some classroom work, and I think we're going to have some thunderstorms tomorrow, unfortunately. So it's probably going to be all indoors tomorrow. But hey, I'm fine with that. Let's knock out the classroom work first, I guess. We'll see what happens. All right. Good night. Ugh. It's currently 9.28 in the morning. I'm about to head out to Midwest PPG. It's about a 15 minute drive north from here. So I'll see you on the field. Since the very beginning of day one of this training, the weather was just not cooperating. The forecast showed isolated thunderstorms throughout the entire week, but riding into this small little airport, I felt pretty good. I knew a lot of classroom work had to be done before we even thought about getting in the air, so I tried my best to push the weather out of my mind. This is an isolated little airport tucked away in the middle of Indiana. Typically, it's only used during the summer months by a skydiving company and the occasional private flyer coming in and out. And I can't forget a local dude who has a spotty reputation for flying his sketchy gyrocopter. But other than all that, this uncontrolled airport is dominated by power paragliders. How you doing, sir? I'm Kevin. Hey, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. All right, guys, we'll get started. Uh, first things first, some administrative stuff. If you guys can go through your books. The very first thing we did was take a little tour around the facility, which was nothing more than just a hangar for all the equipment, a staff room full of computers, and this classroom, which was just renovated to make it bigger over the winter due to the growing demand for the sport. And then before we even started on any classroom work, we filled out these legal waivers. Typical legal paperwork that has to be filled out by anyone who chooses to participate in such an activity. But not to worry, I didn't plan on suing if I died anyway. Uh, first off, let us introduce ourselves to you all. Uh, who wants to start, Dave? Sure. Dave is the owner of Midwest PPG, the big boss man, but a really humble guy who's easy to get along with. He's been flying paramotors for almost 20 years, and being a former mechanic, he's very knowledgeable and useful about the inner workings of two-stroke engines. Matt is a former Marine with a fascination for flying. His father was a pilot, and Matt himself flew planes, gliders, and even did some skydiving. It wouldn't take me long to see firsthand all the knowledge he has to bring to the table here at PPG. I'm Brad. Uh, I'm from here in Indiana, about two hours north of here. Brad, too, is a veteran of the United States military. He served four years in the Navy, then did another eight in the Army. He went through Midwest PPG training just last summer, but Dave and Matt were so impressed by his skills and the instruction he learned with his military service that they hired him on after. After everyone introduced themselves, we took a little break to familiarize ourselves with the gear out in the hangar, and the rain was coming down so hard it made it difficult to have a conversation. So we retreated back into the classroom for our first lesson on pre-flight checks. If anything, always check your throttle. Even if you ditch everything else I'm going to show you, always 100% visually with your eyes check this, okay? Um, so when we're checking the throttle, we're going to check for two things, right? So I've got my throttle in my hand, I can feel it, make sure it's not sticky or anything like that. But I'm also going to watch the carburetor, okay, and we'll show you the different models, but you want to visually watch and make sure that this goes all the way open and all the way back to closed, okay? So we need all the way open for launch. We're not going to be able to launch with half power, so we need to make sure that this is going to go full throttle, and we need to make sure that once we let off, it's coming back down and we're not stuck circling until we run out of gas, okay? So very most important thing 
out of everything to check is going to be your throttle. We want to visually verify it goes all the way open and all the way back to closed. Like class. Once our first course was finished, we went out into the hangar and donned motors for the first time. This was just to get us familiar with wearing the equipment and feeling what it's like to have an extra 50 pounds on your back. They also hung us from the ceiling to take us through our first liftoff experience. This required getting into your seat by bringing your knees up and pushing down on the seat board. It looks and sounds simple, and it is, but the scenario changes when you're 100 feet off the ground, and using something you shouldn't as leverage to lift yourself up could be disastrous. There are five of us who signed up for this training, and since day one it seems like we all just clicked whether it was through our shared interest in the sport or the challenge that lay before us. We became a positive group of individuals who could rely on each other for support and encouragement. As a former skydiver and aviation novice, I found it extremely refreshing to find a niche in aviation that was so welcoming. At one point, Dave and I discussed at length how protective pilots can be with their hobbies, but the powered paragliding community has a reputation for welcoming new members with open arms, and it definitely felt that way here at Midwest PPG. Certainly, the biggest icebreaker for our first day was the weather. It gave us a legitimate excuse to get to know one another. Like how much Matt loves storm watching, which makes sense since he was going to be teaching our class on aviation weather. But lightning is about to strike right outside our hangar, so keep an eye out for Matt's reaction. Sitting in Matt's weather class was very reminiscent of the one I teach to 8th graders. What does the cold air do? But his was greater in detail and focused on how it all relates to aircraft. He taught us how midday thermals form, move, and collapse wings. The chemistry behind humidity and why humid air is less dense and thus harder to launch in than dry air. And how to stay away from a thing called cloud suck. An event that can happen under towering cumulonimbus clouds, which can cause ultralight pilots to uncontrollably ascend tens of thousands of feet. Unfortunately, it once happened to a paraglider who flew into a storm. She was sucked up to an altitude of 32,000 feet where she was left frozen and unconscious in a hibernative state. Cumulus. Just cumulus? Just cumulus cloud. A cumulus cloud is formed through convective uh, motion in the atmosphere. After sitting through Matt's two-hour class, I felt my knowledge on the subject was supplemented by a factor of three. The guy has a gift for keeping his students engaged. And we're going to relax, okay? It sounds really cheesy, but I'm serious. We need to relax. The last thing on the day's agenda was wing familiarization. Learning to lay out the wing and hook in with the harness. Most people would be surprised just by the amount of steps it takes to do so safely and correctly. So see how I'm holding these 
I've got my hook end points together. I can imagine like a dowel rod through there, right, or a pin, okay? I'm going to keep those just like that. We all turn, everybody turns to the left, yes. correct? So, I've cleared my A's. I've got my hook end points together. I'm going to spin them to the left 180 degrees. Just kind of right. 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 Oh, I see this one right here, and then keep this arm straight. Just try to keep this one here with it. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think it was. Hold that. Okay. Just that way. That, it's surprising to me how many people, because they've got to take out in their hand. They're open. It feels comfy, uh -huh. but it lets brakes fall out of your hands when you're trying to help your brakes. Yeah. So, yep. Make sure you got it. Yep. It kind of needs to follow up the risers when you bring it up. If you leave it down, it tends to pull brake. We were nearing the end of the day, and the rain had let up by this time. But the ground was already too saturated to lay a wing out on it, so kiting would have to wait until tomorrow. All right, back in the hotel room tonight. Uh, we went from like... 10 in the morning to 6.15 in the evening. Great first day. I love their teaching method. These three dudes are just great guys all around. It took us out to Applebee's afterwards for this first day, which is really nice of them. And you know, the, rumors, the rumor is that this training facility, Midwest PPG, is the, you know, the best in the country. And after this first you know, day, eight hours, whatever, I honestly believe it. Like the, the thing these three dudes bring to the table, I, I don't know how, who else could do that. Who else could bring, who else could dump the knowledge that these guys have both in the classroom and like life experiences really given their backgrounds. I, I mean, it's just, it's just awesome. I'm so privileged to be a part of this class. I'm so glad that I signed up for this. Really though, once it's up, it doesn't need much. Just focus on staying under that and slowing the high side down. Okay? The controls that you need on the right are this much. Okay, you're just feeling into pressure a little bit and then back up to that neutral point at the top of the brain. Yep. Kiting can be a difficult skill to learn because it requires your brain to think backwards and upside down. The wing responds to the most subtle behaviors, so you can't fight it, you gotta dance with it. Kiting for a few hours in the morning, the rain provided us an opportunity to get back in the classroom to learn more about wing mechanics and takeoffs. Sea riser. Interesting thing about these sea risers, most of them don't have a color code on them, right? They don't, they're not stitched with something. And that's because they will do the same thing as a V-stall in flight, but it'll be really, really severe. A little bit of pressure there. Watch this. This is pinched up just a little bit right there. Still out of the seat, his landing gear's down. This is a really, really critical time in your flight. The worst thing that can happen on your launch is for your engine to quit. And if you just get off the ground and hop into the seat and you're putzing with your brakes and bang, the motor dies, now you've got to undo all that and get ready to land or skid in on your frame. I noticed he kept his hands down after he was in the air. You don't want to immediately put him back up, right? Yeah, good question. Let's think about that. So I'm, I'm cruising along. I add some brake pressure. That slows the wing down, increases the angle of attack, and up I go. I'm holding that brake pressure, and what would happen if I rapidly dumped the brakes? Mm -hmm. My glider's gonna accelerate to its new trim speed. I've, I've let the brakes go. 
up it goes, go and now it's going to dive down and get to that speed it needs for straighten level flight. So the idea is going to be we put the pressure in and ease out of it slowly. Next came an in-depth and hands-on pre-flight check, as well as more work in the simulator practicing for our takeoffs. And with keeping this really, really steady, you're going to reach down to the seat board behind your right butt cheek, push down on the seat board as you pull your knees to your face. Awesome. And then we finished the day by strapping the motors on our backs and familiarizing ourselves with throttle control, all while the instructors radioed communication through our headsets. And then walk it forward. We'll do that a couple times. That's kind of like training wheels though. You're never going to back into your wing to get the thrust point. So day two is officially wrapped up, and I'm a little bit sore tonight uh, from all the running out in the field with the with the wing and kiting it. Uh, that thing can definitely push you around, that's for sure. And man, talk about sprinting your butt off with the biggest stroke shoot you, you can imagine. So it was a good workout, good aerobic cardio workout. But I needed today. You know, today was a huge confidence booster because I did pretty well under the wing, especially for a beginner, I was told. And we got the paramotor on our backs, and I feel more confident about what to expect now and how to throttle the thing and the power these propellers and these engines, uh, how much it can produce, how much power it can produce, which is pretty amazing. We'll also have you rehearse what you do if you lose a brake toggle. If you lose a brake toggle, it comes untied, it's gone. We use D riser steering, the rear risers. And it just be, it won't turn as well as brakes, but it'll turn. So it won't be completely <coughs> screwed if you lose a brake toggle. The group started day three outside in the simulator, going over the basics for takeoffs and landings. At face value, these events seem pretty basic, and they can be for experienced pilots. However, for beginners, just learning the skills for the first time is a lot to take in. And the thought that these steps have to be learned correctly and in the right order, or your life could be forfeit, adds to the pressure to get them right the first time. With both, with one hand on that, one hand on that. Oh, I see. In. I see, okay. Then returning one at a time. That's about as far as you're allowed to get. Wait, pressure, hold, 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 all the way down. Good. Back up one, cool. All right, so that's what it'll be for your landing. That's why Midwest PPG and training centers like them have simulators, to build confidence without the risk of life and limb. So with the instructors radioing in our ear, we were told to visualize flying as we were taken through launch and landing procedures. As the morning progressed, the forecast showed approaching storms, but the instructors quickly managed to take to the skies so they could show the majority of us what paramotoring actually looked like in person.
The second half of the day was classroom work that taught us everything we needed to know about takeoffs and landings, often using the first flights of prior students as examples. This was the moment I started to fully understand why all powered paragliders I'd seen on YouTube had failed launches in their videos. And after you watch these few minutes of Dave and Matt's lecture, you too will begin to appreciate the complexity. Our first stage here is inflation of the glider, no power. As the glider clears the thrust line, we go to stage two, where we get to this lean back power that we're practicing, just enough to push you across the field, and that will help the glider inflate evenly. So uh, we'll call that inflate, add power, now control it, taxi it. This is your chance under lean back power prior to launch. So you're moving, you've got a solid glider, check everything's okay. Make sure your wing tips are both totally inflated, make sure you've got a safe launch out in front of you. Once you determine everything's good, I'm ready to launch this thing, we're going to go through kind of a progression of getting our posture right. So as I'm squeezing the rest of my power in, I'm pushing my hips forward and directing the thrust. Run, 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 and then the very last stage, uh, a good, a good uh, measure is I've taken like three or four steps at full throttle. It's really pushing me now, then a little bit of brake pressure. That'll cause the wing to fall back, increase angle of attack and launch. situation. The very first thing we're going to have you do is ease out of your seat. That means everything else stays the same. My throttle stays the same. Brakes stay the same. I'm just straightening up out of the seat. That'll move the glider around a little bit. As soon as that's done, uh, ease out of your power. One thing about these weight shift machines is it's possible to put a bias on your leg and it causes weight shift when you're out of the seat. So you can see right now my weight's equally distributed and now it's all on one leg even though my body feels in a similar position. So as you're coming in, out of the seat, we want to square our weight up in those straps. You don't want everything leaning on one strap where the glider will have a yaw to it all the way down into the landing and you'll be correcting it with counter brake. So we get out of our seat, make sure we're straight in the harness, no weight shift is in it. Once that happens and we've got a good steady glider, we'll back out of the power all the way, smoothly and slowly, okay? It's like one, two, three, down to idle. We'll begin our glide slope then. Once we begin that glide slope, no more weight shift coming into land, okay? Centered in the harness. Any corrections you need are really gentle, slow, patient corrections. It's going to be, you're drifting to your right a little bit. Give me a little bit, one inch of left brake one inch and hold it right down into the pressure and it will slowly yaw back. If we need a little more, I'll say give me one more inch. And once it's there, slowly let it out. Your brake release, anytime you're flying, should be slower than you put it in. Okay, that'll keep oscillation from coming into the wind. So tiny, really gentle patient corrections from our glide, when we begin our glide all the way down to the ground. So then we're just watching the wing, seeing where it wants to go. When you let that power off, what are, what are you also letting off? Torque. torque, right. So I've been at cruise power, I release it and the torque unwinds and it's going to turn. So we get it back online with little minor corrections. And now we're just watching from, for about 40 feet, watching the descent of the glider, getting everything situated so that with no input at all, it's coming straight into the field. As we're coming down our glide slope, we've got a really straight, quiet wing above our head. We're going to kill the motor as soon as we know we're going to make the field. We don't need the go around option anymore. You're going to make the field somewhere safely. Kill the motor. Killing the motor will change the wing a little bit, even if it's idling. It'll get quiet, the wing will settle down. Okay, now we've got our new glide slope. Hopefully it didn't change very much. At about 30 feet, we're just going to tell you, hands all the way up. What does hands up mean? Release all the brake pressure. It means to the top of the brake pressure without using it. 
right? It doesn't mean lock your hands up. So we'll tell you, okay, good, nice setup, hands all the way up. Let's get the glider going fast now. Uh, next you'll hear wait, 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 and as we see your feet come through what I imagine to be a line at the top of my head and my belt buckle, your feet come through here, we'll tell you pressure, and the tone of our voice will be the tone of your pressure. If we say pressure, we want it fast. If we say pressure, it's just really slow and easy. Every landing is going to be different. That's part of the fun of landing. They're, they're easy, but they're challenging. You've got to, you've got to pay attention, and it's a lot of fun. So I uh, will tell you how much pressure. That pressure really is just a hold-off pressure. I'm going to pull in some brakes and don't let the glider descend anymore. Okay? There's no way to tell you pull the brakes to your elbows or to your shoulders. If you're in seven mile an hour wind versus zero wind, it's going to be a different amount of pull and a different speed of pull. Make something happen though. Hold the glider off the ground. Okay? We'll tell you wait, 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 pressure, hold, 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 flare it hard. That second flare, we want it to happen before you start the descent the second time, right? We're descending, we're saying level off, we're going to descend again. Right before that second descent happens, we want to stuff the brakes as hard down and back as you can get them and hold them down there until your feet are on the ground and you've got your balance, okay? So we spent the rest of the day in the classrooms and we talked about takeoffs and landings and federal regulations concerning the sport. Good news is there are not very many of them, which is why the sport's so appealing to so many people. So then we decided to call it a little bit of an early day. Hopefully tomorrow the weather starts to turn for the better and then hopefully get in the air. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. Although we didn't know it when we arrived at the hangar in the morning, our first solo flights would take place before the day was over. The morning weather was just good enough to spend some extra time in the simulator and further practice our kiting skills. But once again, heavy storm clouds rolled in during the afternoon, putting us back in the classroom for a lesson in motor maintenance and sectional charts. Both classes are of the utmost importance since every paramotor pilot is its own mechanic and every pilot must know where legal airspace begins and ends. But just before sunset, the skies cleared up enough for us to attempt our first flights and the late evening cumulonimbus clouds surrounding our airfield made for a beautiful setting. We gonna have him do yep. forward. We'll make it snack. Yep, snappy for the forward. Yeah, I think the rain may have stopped. No straws were drawn as to which of us would fly first. Step back a couple feet, please. I was voluntold. Good. In my mind, I was going over my mental checklist of launch procedures and trying to calm my nerves. Double check, check these, Jesse. Make sure they're not looped over weird. The biggest fear isn't so much hurting yourself as it is embarrassing yourself and damaging the expensive equipment on your back. Yeah, just like we talked about. Um, Dave and Matt kept telling us that we'd only commit to launching if everything looked damn near perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and grab your brakes. We all knew tonight was the night, so to squash any doubts that could trip me up, I committed to launching no matter what, Good. and you'll see that reflected in my aggressive uh, throttling at launch. Quick reminder, you're really going to kind of need this motor to help bring the wing up. So don't, you know, don't, when he says power, let it push you, push you, push you, push you. Okay. All right. And if things don't look good, kill, kill, kill. Go ahead and get your A's. Air is glassy smooth. Nice. And I'd like to put that right there. You guys hear me over there? Do you guys have a radio? Turn my wide. Brad, can you hear me? Can you guys turn the radio on over there? Hey, Brad. Okay, cool. Okay. You're hearing him loud and clear, right? Yep. <clears throat> I'm turning it down so it didn't blast your ears out. All right, I'm gonna start you. All right, clear. All right, so we're gonna let that motor warm up for about 30 or 40 seconds, and I'll just talk to you during that time. I only want you to focus on a car taxi. If you get everything right, we will actually fly. But for now, just focus on as the glider comes up, Get the, I'll tell you to add power. We want to get it to that lean back power. Stay on your A's without pushing. You're just holding your A's in your hand and lifting your hands up a little bit to let the risers climb. And then we'll kind the glider if, any, if something isn't perfect. We'll just kill the motor, turn around, and try it again. We're just taxing. Okay, if you get everything right and we get to the point where we're full throttle and running, I want you to focus on keeping those feet down. I'll tell you, full throttle, run faster, run faster, full throttle, run faster, pressure, run faster, pressure, run faster, hold everything right there, okay? Every time I give you a command, your legs stay down and nothing changes with those landing gear, okay? Alright. Alright, so, are you on your center? Ready to go? Okay. Arms out, pinch your shoulder blades. Get them out here where they're weak. Arms further out, there we go. Perfect. Even further out. Out here where they're weak, good. Alright, I want you to take a deep breath. And whenever you're ready, start coming to me with some energy. 
So on the evening of June 18th, 2019, the powered paragliding community officially welcomed the five of us into their club as paramotor pilots, a passage that all of us dreamt about and worked toward for several years. To make the moment all the sweeter, each person successfully launched on their first attempt and landed on their feet, despite the fact there was no wind that evening to help us, which we were told is an uncommon occurrence. Any fixed wing or ultralight pilot will tell you, first solo flights are a memory of adrenaline-filled anxiety and excitement that will never be forgotten. But training doesn't end after you become a pilot. Training never ends. Once the sun rises in the morning, we will continue several more days of classroom work, exams, kiting, and flying.
During my training at Midwest PPG, I managed to log 17 flights, despite it being the wettest week the Midwest had seen in a while. And I owe my new title as a paramotor pilot to the staff. Their professionalism, easygoing demeanor, instructing abilities, and diverse experiences equipped us with the knowledge and skill to fly safely. I want to take this opportunity to personally thank Dave, Matt, Brad, Jesse, and JC for the memories they have created with me and those that I will create in the future because of them. And I want to thank my fellow flymates, John, Jared, Giles, and Kathy, who are nothing but encouraging and fun to fly around with. Whether or not we get to fly together again, I will never forget the nine days that we spent together, dodging the storms and soaring in the sunshine, when we could find it.